The first step towards self-improvement that people often overlook is the two brain hemispheres. People often refer to the brain as being one thing, but in fact, it is not. It is the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. Now, everything on your left side, your left eye, your left ear, your left hand, and your left leg is connected to your right hemisphere. Your right eye, your right face, your right hand, your right leg, and everything on your right side is connected to your left brain hemisphere. Dr. Ian McGilchrist in his book, The Master and His Emissary, talks about this in great detail. Dr. Ian McGilchrist knows perfectly well what happens in the brain when you get a stroke in your right hemisphere or the left hemisphere. Now that we know that the left face and eye and ear is connected to your right side and that your right eye, right ear and face is connected to the left side, let's start talking about what the two hemispheres do. This side of your brain is truthful and social. It doesn't lie, literally. It does not lie. It contains your IQ, your crystalline IQ, how quickly you can associate things and see the whole of another individual. Not just that they have a blonde or black dark hair, they also have a personality, they have good and bad sides. And that's the right side of the brain through empathy and altruistic means, love for example, all are situated in the right hemisphere. Since it's the social part of your brain, that means in your right frontal lobe, just be above your right eye, you actually have the ability to block yourself from impulses. For example, psychopaths have a stroke or deficiency in the fr right frontal lobe, which means that they can't stop their left side of the brain, which I'm going to talk about soon, to do what it does. Also, if you get other strokes down the line in the midbrain here, you can start overeating and overusing sex because you lack the inhibition control that the right side of you will give you. That's the social part of you. Your right side of the brain sees connection, connection between you and another human being, and that creates in itself love. It's not unconditional love, but it's how we connect to other people, animals, and things. That's what you find in your right hemisphere. Now, the right hemisphere talks to itself when it makes associations, but it also talks to your left side of the brain. And now that we talk about the left side of the brain, the left side of the brain has the map to your mental model of the world. Your right side doesn't contain that. It only reads between the lines and does associations. But the left side of the brain only knows what has been written from the subconscious right side into the conscious left side. And that means that your left side will never question things. It only knows the truth. It only knows its view of the world that has been written by your right side of the hemispheres. What that means is that, for example, when you have language, language, the words are situated in the left hemisphere and the grammar, but it's also in your right hemisphere. Your right hemisphere, on the other hand, read between the lines. So if someone says, or you say, it's cold in here, the left side of the brain only hears and sees the words, it's cold in here. While the right side of the brain reads that at well, I should most likely uh, turn up the, the temperature in the room because people are freezing in here. That's the association part of your right brain hemisphere. The problem with the left hemisphere is that it doesn't question things. It only knows the mental model. A table is a table. The floor you're walking on is the floor. For example, when you were a child, when you were an infant and you don't remember this, your left side of the brain uh, got the... Uh, answer the result from your right brain in that you wouldn't fall through the floor when you crawled on it or walked on it. That way now you don't question if you can walk on the floor when you get up in the morning. You just get up and walk on it. You don't question it. One 
very important thing you also should know about your hemispheres is that the left hemisphere runs automatically and energy efficient. It doesn't require energy. The right hand, on the other hand, needs glucose or sugar. So the reason why you get dogmatic about things with your left hemisphere and don't question things is because the right hemisphere writes habits and routines for you so that you don't use up the sugar you have. For example, if you starve, then your liver will start producing glucose so that your brain works and you can think critically and use your right hemisphere. If you see a, an animal in the woods when you're out walking, your left eye is connected to your right hemisphere. That will question, will this animal kill me or not? You do the same thing with new people that you meet. Is this person dangerous for me or not? That's done in the right hemisphere. Then the right hemisphere writes that subroutine in your left hemisphere and it becomes a habit to you that you can either trust this person or you will not trust this person because you feel that something is wrong with that person. Your left hemisphere contains all the isms narcissism, feminism, left extremism, right extremism, all the religionisms, all those dogmatic things that only have one world view of how things are, are found in the left hemisphere. That's because the left hemisphere cannot associate or criticize itself. It knows only the map that you have written for it. And it also contains only one emotion and that is aggression. That's why you see all these extremisms, whichever it is, which because the left side of your brain is antisocial. It doesn't reason with people. It just forces people to adhere to the le their left hemisphere reasoning. That's why you can't question them and they don't really care what you bring to the table with, with science and things like that because they're not engaging the right hemisphere. That's why there's no point in talking logically or, or calmly with an aggressive person. It's better just to walk away and when, wait until they actually calm down. The same thing happens when you have a word on the tip of your tongue and you can't find it. Like you, it's a name of a person you want to find that you can't really remember. That's because you're in your left hemisphere and it's tensing up. You actually need to relax in order to get, get engage your right hemisphere. And when you relax by doing dishes, by showering someone else talking about something else, it pops into your head. And that's because the left hand side of the brain has a super focus. And when you're super focused, you can't see anything else. It's the same thing with your eyes. If uh, you want to know what you can see in focus, hold out your, th your thumb like this and your thumbnail is actually the only, the only area you see in focus. Everything else is out of focus. And that's what we use in UX design, for example, when we do mobile apps and websites so that you can focus on the proper things and see them. There's a famous example of how you count uh, the number of times one team with white t-shirts passes the basketball to its team members and you count that by you focusing on counting the numbers of basketball's passes you don't see that there is a man in a gorilla suit walking right into the center of the stage and, and bouncing its chest and then walking out again if you haven't seen it before you will not see the gorilla. That's because your left side of the brain is super engaged and focused on counting how many basketball passes the team members do. That's how you get fooled by the left hemisphere. It knows nothing else but the focus it's, it's paying attention to. And it doesn't reason. That's the main thing to understand about the left hemisphere. That's why you also have psych uh, psychopaths, narcissism, sadism, and Machiavellianism in your left side. When we talk about Machiavellianism, the left side is connected to your right hand primarily in most people. 89% of the world's people are right-handed. That's because 
The left side of the brain manipulates things with your hands and it also manipulates your words in order for others to understand your left hand perspective of the world, your mental model. In order for you to do that, you need to be manipulative and Machiavellian. So as you can see, all the antisocial parts in every human being is in the left hemisphere. Your right hemisphere, which is social, prohibits you from doing bad things. For example, your right frontal lobe prohibits you from being callous in a team meeting with others because you need to stay social. That's the right hemisphere. It prohibits you to seek out and rape people because your social side of your brain feels empathy and become altruistic. When you get a stroke in this right hemisphere, you don't have that ability anymore. Therefore, your left mental model of the world and your left hemisphere will force you to do antisocial things. You might even become a criminal. Uh, that's what you see in antisocial behavior and criminal behavior. They lack the capacity of the right brain, even though they have very high creative skills in IQ. But if they have a stroke or a born with innate problem with their right frontal lobe, they become psychopaths, even though they are creative, which is also situated in the right hemisphere. Uh, that's how the brain is mapped when it comes to how you see the world and how you interact with it. Now, personality psychology is another way of looking at how the brain is structured. And if you want to know more about personality, you can watch this video up here and you can understand the different uh, aspects and facets and traits about personality.